Well, Treasuries again lower here on the news that the Fed chief is ready to have the Fed tighten rates if the economic outlook improves. Joe Balestrino is fixed income market strategist at Federated Investors, which has $407 billion in assets. He joins us now from Pittsburgh to offer his perspective of interest rates and bonds. Joe, great to see you. Good to be back, Laurie. Thanks. So is there any, would you think this is any of an overreaction? We're seeing huge selling in Treasuries today to those Bernanke comments. I'm not sure I'd call it an overreaction. The overreaction was probably what preceded it. You know, when the three-year was rapidly approaching 3% and, and the 30-year went through 4%, it is almost funny in a way that the, the chairman just gave us a textbook comment last night where he said, you know, if things catch hold, we're going to raise rates. Well, that's what we do. But I think there's a subtle message, or maybe not so subtle, that things are getting better slowly and the next move is to higher rates. So what is it in the timing of Bernanke that caused this sudden turn of asset values? Hey, I'm not sure there was any magic to the timing. If there was, maybe it was the continued, you know, pummeling that the U.S. dollar has taken. So in a way, you're, there's a little bit of support from the dollar. And there's some, there's, in concert with some of our major trading partners, wouldn't mind seeing their currencies stop the, the, the massive appreciation to help their own economies out. So to the extent you're going to raise rates, you're going to raise interest rates, your, your currency is going to become a little bit more valuable overnight. I think that's part of it. Would you characterize Bernanke's comments as a verbal intervention? I would, in essence, or at least kind of stage three. I say stage three of the exit strategy. Stage one being we're going to extend the Treasury purchase program. Stage two, we're going to extend the mortgage program. Now stage three, we're going to think about changing monetary policy at some point next year. So that was the first words we get there. So that's a pretty good label for it, verbal intervention. So a lot of people weren't expecting rates to uh, go up until like the second half later next year. Do you think that the chairman was signaling perhaps we'll see rates increase sooner? I, I think he left that door open. They are they are a gradualist organization, if you will, and I think they needed to paint the picture at some point that we're going to change policy as opposed to, you know, basically zero percent for an extended period of time. Now he's, he's putting a word out there that things will change if we continue on this path. Talk about the Treasury auctions. Uh, after auctions of the last month or so, cruising right along, a lot of demand really hit a, a stumbling block with the 30-year the other day. Uh, what happened? What, why? What happened? Why was that uh, auction not as successful as the previous ones? You're right. It was it was the first time we saw it reverse. You could almost take the auctions and sell bonds right in front of them on Monday and Tuesday and buy them back middle to latter part of the week. And once it's over, you know, the pressure goes away. This was the reverse. And I think it's in, in many ways it's the absolute level. We've seen we've seen mortgage rates come down into the five handles again, which is all systems go on the housing market, which gets the credit market going, which says at the end of the day, rates should go back up if the economy is going to get back on its feet. I think absolute levels mean a lot as you approach the threes and the fours. Is it also an issue of oversupply now? It, it has to be. At some point in time, we're, we're ever increasing the frequency of auctions and the size of auctions, and, and our major trading partners are grum, grumbling about you know, foreign currency diversification of their reserves. So all of that, the supply is an unending story. The deficit situation will not reverse for a long time. So yes, it's, it's probably too many bonds, not enough buyers, as simple as that sounds. And you'd imagine the oversupply issue to get worse as the Fed's purchase program winds up, right? So is that going to be more dilutive to Treasuries? We believe so. And we've been positioned for quite a while short of our duration targets, albeit a little bit early. It's been a little bit of a painful situation the last couple of months. But we have as much conviction as ever that, that rates are simply too low for the fundamentals that we think are coming next year. Interesting. So then where is the best value in fixed income and the way you see it? You know, in our minds, in one word, it's credit. And, and the big question we get is, OK, you've been overweight credit and it's had a monster run. Should you not sell something that's up anywhere from 20 to 50 percent year to date? And our view is is no. You've made the big capital appreciation, but but credit spreads are still very wide from any historic basis. And absent the double dip recession, that's not in our scenario. These things are going to grind tighter. You've just had the big capital appreciation already occur, but now you sort of grind and you still make coupon plus some some price price move up. We think so. We only have a couple seconds left here, Joe, but we mentioned in our graphic there, emerging market, you see a lot of value there. Can you explain? We do, for, for a couple of reasons. Basic fundamentals. There's no question that the engine of growth from a global perspective, it's over for the United States. That need not be a negative comment. The emerging economies are for real. They're developing consumer spending patterns. Commodity prices are still in high demand. So you go where the growth is, and that's a higher yielding segment, and we think there's some room to run there. Joe Balestrino, Federated Investors. Great to have you. Thanks for your time.